Whatever God is or isn't, it came down off the mountain a long time ago for me. And it was never even on the mountain, nor was it ever far away, somewhere way up there beyond the sky in heaven. Even though in Sunday school, that's where I was told that he, because it was definitely a he, lived way up there. We here this morning, by and large, were all born after the First and Second World Wars, the events that first flattened religion in more than one way. Religion, Western religion especially, began to change and diminish after those horrors. God did not step in and save the millions of young men. God did not intervene in the Holocaust. God was dead, Nietzsche said, and so he was. But it was the God of the last thousand years or so that was gone. It was not the end of mystery, wonder, awe, the sacred, or the holy. It's mystery today, and so everything is weird with microphones and sound. I'm going to try this one. <laughs> so did you hear that? All right. There, these sacred things came to reside within the earth, within nature, within the universe, even within physics and evolution. Mystery and wonder came to reside within the human heart and within all of life. And this form of spirit, connection, the interdependent web of all existence, has really always been present, never owned or fully defined by any religion. The three-layered theology of the Christian God and somewhat of the Jewish and Muslim God was flattened, especially after World War II. Religion writer Diana Butler Bass says, for gone was the worldview of heaven above in all its glory, the mundane earth filled with sin and lowliness in the middle, with the third lower level, the burning fires of hell. It wasn't simply science that killed this God and this worldview. It was seeing hell on earth, the evil that can be caused human against human. The evil we can still see, unfortunately, in so many horrendous events from 9-11 to Sandy Hook. The conflated world that we live in is sometimes now called the age of anxiety or the age of fear. And it has made people of the last hundred years or so ask very different questions about God. They had to accept, we have to accept, that God doesn't come down and intervene and that evil exists on earth. So instead of asking God for help, or believing that there was some cosmic lesson to be learned, Butler Bass says that people began asking, where is God? And what many people have found is that God, or spirit, or mystery, or compassion, or love, is here with us and within us, woven into the fabric of life and nature, crying with us in spirit, emboldening the courageous, holding the suffering, not removed on some heavenly plane. In my own individual experience, it was sensing in nature beneath the peach trees in my grandmother's yard 
and thereby knowing in my heart when I was five that I was loved and held within the mystery of life, something I believe and feel to this day. I went seeking something because I was sad. My mother was sad. We were living with her mother because my father had left, which was actually a good thing, and we were struggling to survive. A five-year-old doesn't understand that. They just go outside, outside sad and seeking. The phenomenon of spiritual but not religious describes many people today, including those who might find this Unitarian Universalist community. In her most recent book, Grounded, Butler Bass writes, the Public Religion Research Institute has developed a spiritual experiences index indicating that 65% of Americans score in the moderate to very high range of spiritual connection, reporting some sense of wonder, inner peace and harmony, and oneness with nature. Data that lends credence to the argument that God in heaven is giving way to the spirit with us. And she capitalizes spirit, just as I do in my Sunday prayers. Even atheists like Sam Harris, she continues, admit that mindfulness, enlightenment, and spiritual awakening are possible and desirable for a happy and ethical life, separated from the idea of conventional theism. Butler Bass says that we are in the midst of a spiritual revolution that people still believe, but they believe differently. Instead of who and what, their questions are now where and how, which explains today's huge interest in spiritual practices. And like mystics in all traditions, people are finding spirit in virtually everything, not in some separate metaphysical sphere. This shift in religious consciousness is a worldwide phenomenon, she writes, a sort of divine web in which we are all tangled. Although atheists and humanists might look upon this askance as a return to superstition, it is equally legitimate to read the shift as a re-enchantment of the world, a spiritual revolution of astonishing scope. And everyone is caught up in the web. I hope you can hear our seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part woven into her words. With our Unitarian Transcendentalist movement of the late 19th century, we were actually ahead of this curve, philosophically and spiritually aware that whatever God is, it was part of and within nature, which included the human spirit and human will. And in fact, our very names reflect this trend. Universalist, a belief that God is universal love if God is anything, and that this love would not condemn to hell those for wrong belief. And Unitarianism, the idea that everything is a oneness, a unity, something so great that we can hardly imagine it. That is our spiritual heritage. These ideas, of course, and if you've come to some of my classes, you know, they are mystic. Mostly because, as scholar Elaine Pagels would point out, anybody can experience them. And so they have often been seen as heretical to orthodox beliefs and creeds, and a threat to the religious powers that be. Finally, Butler Bass finds that you cannot revive a God for a world that no longer exists. 
And venerating a God of a vanished world is the very definition of fundamentalism. Hence, the great suffering and pain being inflicted still and still in the name of religion upon millions across the planet. So are you with me? Do you see how we are part of a different time and have a different world view? Do you see how the three-tiered realm of old has been flattened into this earthly plane, but which also now includes the whole universe? Do you wonder how mystery and a sense of awe might re-enchant your life? Can you learn to trust mystery, wonder, and awe, not by giving them definition? Can you recreate the sacred in our world and find the holy within? Know that, along with evil, the human heart is capable of so much beauty and love. Not all of you, but maybe 65% of you, will be able to go with me now to a more personal consideration of the spiritual in our world. What was that spirit feeling that literally saved my heart when I was little? Why did I know that I was loved and held by something greater than my small self. Mystic spirituality is based upon individual experience, something definitely not trusted by Orthodox faith. For if I can have a spiritual experience, then truly anyone can. This means you don't necessarily need priests and mediators between yourself and spirit, and spirit might enter your heart without any help from religion. Remember that Butler Bass is writing as a Christian within the Christian world. And she does say that this does not mean that we no longer need congregations, worship, and communities. It means, though, that how we are together needs to change just as we have been working on here at Prairie. We want to create a safe and sacred space for absolutely everyone. So that your heart, young or old, your soul and mind might find peace and harmony. That you might feel your heart grow with compassion and care. That you might imagine the boundaries that separate us breaking down so that we begin to see to the heart of each person, including ourselves, see all the way to each person's inherent worth and dignity, no matter what they may believe or profess. To be clear, this journey is not about accepting evil or hatred. Accepting that into our midst, it is about the human heart and mind developing love and fighting the evil within. It is the journey toward the good and positive side of our natures and of all life. My personal journey as a minister has been to try to understand the layers of my own ego that keep me from being my best self and that keep the sacred space hidden from within me. As the Apostle Paul said so long ago, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. Why? I know I can do better. 
be true to my inner self. And so each day I practice those things that might help. Prayer, silence, meditation, reading, mantras on kindness. Because I have touched the mystery before, and because I have felt awe in many experiences of my life, from the birth of my daughters to the sailing of my soul, looking out over an ocean, from falling in love with my husband to the giddy flight of heart, walking high up on Winella Pass, I continually still seek the mystery. And I now seek to find that mystery in everyday life and in everyday moments. From my studies of the spiritual side of the Enneagram, which is a theory of nine different personality and spiritual styles, with each having its own particular internal stumbling block, I seek wholeness within. I didn't know if I would confess this or not, but my stumbling block is pride. A nearly daily practice at the end of my yoga is to relax the best I can every part of my body, focusing finally and last on my heart center. And I imagine breathing in healing to my heart and breathing out healing. Breathing in compassion and breathing out compassion. Breathing in beauty, breathing out beauty. Breathing in peace, breathing out peace. And finally, breathing in being, breathing out being. Imagining the inner spark of my soul full of being, spirit and touching the great web of being that exists also outside of me. In Dave's Beatles song, After Candles of Community, there were these words, yet you may see the meaning of within. It is being, it is being. Being beats within my heart, soul, and mind, and connects with the greater being of all things. It is a movement, not a thing, a verb, as we have said before, not a noun. I have come to trust this tiny connection with mystery so that I might be better grounded in my life in the world. And I have come to know that the existential sense of aloneness and loneliness within the human heart that same incredible sadness within me as a little girl that found that moment of wonder so long ago is also where there is this small core or spark of connectedness, a small piece of being within that is part of all. The good news is that all you have to do, all you ever have to feel or know is that we can simply join hands and create more love between us. More love than we could ever do if we are alone. We can literally grow love and compassion by being community with fellow seekers of all kinds. And we can go out into our world and create ever more love and possibility. Our work for justice and compassion for each person, no matter how small it is, still grows care and love. Our faith is in life and in the power of the human heart. We may know or have felt the spirit that cannot be named, as the Taoists say. We may know a bit of the mystery of life, and we can trust that it is a positive force, luring us toward the good, as the great theologian Alfred North Whitehead once said, luring us toward the good. We have reason to hope. We are the children and inheritors of this age of anxiety and fear, 
but we are also those who are called to reshape our world. Those who can become part of this new spiritual revolution. Amen.